Hi hey guys, I want to welcome you to NLC Live. Uh, great to be here. I feel so young and hip doing this on my phone. I feel like I'm very high tech. My name is Matt Mosler. I'm the pastor of the New Life Church here in Pine Bluff, and it's a great pleasure to have you guys with us today. We're going to talk about a psalm today. Love the psalms. The psalm we're going to focus on today is Psalm 40. Now, some of you old guys may know Psalm 40. You just don't know that you know Psalm 40. Uh, because back in the 80s, around 1983, there was this little Irish rock band called U2 that recorded an album called War. And the last song on that album was this song called 40. I waited patiently on the Lord. He heard my cry, lifted me out of the miry clay. I will sing a new song. They closed all of their concerts around the world with a song called 40. And it was about Psalm 40. So cool, isn't it? Uh, so we want to talk about Psalm 40 today. We want to talk about singing a new song. So the, the verse we want to really zero in on, the key verse of this chapter is, uh, is verse 5. So let's take a look at verse 5 right now. It says, O Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all of your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Now, why is this the key verse? Well, to know that this is the key verse, you got to look at, at the entire chapter, and it's sort of divided into thirds. The first part of this chapter, verses 1 through 4-ish, uh, is the result of this guy's prayer. I, 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 God, I needed you. I cried out. You were there. God is always there. He sees you. He knows you. He's there to help. Cry out to him. Give your cares. Cast your cares upon me. I'll make your way light. Cry out to God. He's going to hear you. The end of chapter 40 is why this guy needs to pray to God in the first place. I mean, you read the end of chapter 40, man, it's like fire and brimstone, all hell breaking loose, dogs and cats sleeping together. It's crazy. This guy needs help. God, help me. And he cries out to God, and God helps him. Now, why did God help him? Why? What was the result? Verses 1 through 4, in television, we would say this guy did not bury the lead. That's that's what we want. That's the focus here. Verses 1 through 4, I prayed, God heard me, God's great. But why? Well, that's where we get to verse 5. So again, verse 5 is sort of the key verse in here. It unlocks the power of God. I, God, you perform many wonders for us. Your plans are too numerous to list. You have no equal. I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds. I could never come to the end of them. If I tried to recite them, I couldn't come up with all of them. Y'all, it occurs to me that, that Psalm 40 is sort of the Old Testament equivalent of Philippians chapter 4. Or maybe Philippians chapter 4 is the New Testament equivalent of Psalm 40 since it came first. And I'm sure that the Apostle Paul read Psalm 40 a time or two. But remember, if in Philippians 4, the Apostle Paul writes, I rejoice in the Lord always. In other words, I'm always going to rejoice. I'm going to sing a new song. But I'm not just going to rejoice. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to take all my cares and my problems. I'm going to cast them upon God. I'm going to be anxious for nothing. But in all things of prayer and supplication, I'm going to tell God what's going on in my life. God, help me. And then he says, and this is key, he says, whatever things are good, right, just, holy, good repute, excellence, worthy of praise, I'm going to dwell on those things. I'm going to focus on those things. And in, and in Psalm 40, that's what you see this guy doing. You've performed many wonders for us. Your plans are to, God, I'm just opening my eyes and I'm looking around. I'm looking at all the great things you've done. God, you are so wonderful. But then Paul goes a little bit further. He says, it's not just, I'm not just talking about him. I'm going to act on them. He says, the things that are good and right and lovely, let your mind dwell on these things. But then he says, practice them. Put your faith into practice. It's not just talking about it. It's acting on your faith. And the, the solution, the result of all that is that the God of peace will be with you. In other words, I cried out to God. He heard my cry. He saved me. So here's what I want you to do. And, and by the way, this positive thinking stuff, this is not just some new age mumbo jumbo. Y'all, this is Bible stuff right here. Uh, it, po thinking positively, focusing on the positive things, unleash the favor and the power and the presence of God. But it also has some real world effects. The, the Mayo Clinic, for example, not a spiritual institution. The Mayo Clinic did a study and it said people who think more positively, they, uh, they live longer, they handle stress better, they handle problems better, they don't get sick as often. People who think more positively, think on the bright side, uh, Better things happen to them, and they actually they, they don't get as many colds as people who think negatively. Now, I'm not talking about being a Debbie Downer or put on rose-colored glasses. What I'm talking about is 
actively looking at God working in your life and praising him for those little things. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back to, to verse five and here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down, he says, Oh Lord, you perform many wonders for us. I want you to write down, your plans for us are too numerous to list. I want you to list them. I want you to write them down. God, what great things has God done for us? What are the positive things in my life? Where can I see God moving? I need to write them down and you make a list. Get a notebook, start writing them down. But don't just write them. I want you to recite them. He says, if I tried to recite all of your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. In other words, you need to speak it. You need to change the way that you speak. Change the words that are coming out your mouth. I need, to, I need to make sure my words are edifying. My words are life-giving. My words are positive. My words exalt God. I need to write it. I need to recite it. Then I need to delight in it. I need to sing a new song. I need to praise God. I need to be that person that's always being positive and saying, God bless you and praising and singing a brand new song. I need to write it. I need to recite it. I need to delight in it. And if we can do that, you know what's going to happen? We're going to ignite the power and the presence and the favor of God. Because here's the great thing about this. There's going to be negative things in your life. Negative things are going to come. Your enemy exists to keep you from the purpose and the plan God has for you. God, your plans for me are too numerous to list. God's got a purpose and a plan for you. I know the days that I have for you. I know the days that are ordained for you. The enemy's job is to keep you from that destiny, to keep you from that plan, to keep you in bondage. How do we repel him and unleash God? We focus on the, on the positive, wonderful things. We, we write it down. We recite it. We speak it. We delight in it. And we praise him and we ignite the blessings of God in our life. Isn't that good stuff? And you too saying that 35 years ago. Awesome. Let me pray for you. God, we love you and we thank you that you are working in our lives. Sometimes it may seem like you're working behind the scenes, but we just want to take this moment, Lord, to open up our eyes and focus on the positive and rejoice in the great things you're doing for us. God, I'm asking that your favor be unleashed on all those watching this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said. Amen.